One thing that's very different between SQL and MDX is how we can handle queries that have date ranges. So in SQL, handling date ranges is relatively easy and really the query syntax is no different between selecting ranges of dates from a dimension as it is from selecting some range of values from a measure. So we use this kind of syntax where we're selecting columns from some table or from some set of tables and we're just putting the WHERE clause where the trans amount is between 450 and 1225 so this is some metric we're looking for transactions of a certain amount and to handle date ranges we also include that in the WHERE clause and the syntax is identical and in fact the SQL engine treats dimensions and measures pretty much the same when it's doing this kind of a query. MDX is different because in MDX we filter measures pretty much the same way we do in SQL. Normally we'll see the filter being in the on rows statement or on the on column statement, not really in the where clause, but so that's a little bit different, but the syntax is about the same. What is very different is when we're filtering dimension values. In MDX, dimensions have members and everything is done in terms of sets. So to filter for a range of dates, typically we need to somehow determine a set that includes all of the members of the dates that we want in the query. This doesn't exactly correspond to what users are thinking when they want to put in a begin date, end date, and then have a between. So we need to kind of think through how we can accomplish that and map it back into the report. Let's take a look at this query in some level of detail. It begins with a select statement and ends with from. So those are fairly straightforward. On columns, we'll have our measures. So we'll have a flight count, which is the number of airline flights we had on a particular day, and the distance, miles, which is the total number of miles traveled by all those flights together. So those will be aggregated. And on columns, on rows, we have a couple of things. One is range of dates. To get our date range, we have to specify a set of members from the dimension. So this is not using the greater than or equal to kind of notation, we actually are specifying a set, which can get a little bit tricky if our front end doesn't have a way to generate this set for us. We'll take a look at that in a minute. To filter on the flight distance miles, which is a measure, the syntax is almost identical to SQL. You won't find this in the WHERE clause though. To do the filter, we have a function just for that called filter, and the filter takes as the first parameter a set of rows in this case and the second parameter is an expression so it's fairly straightforward if you think about it filter the set of dates where the distance miles is greater than 10 million but less than 11 million and put that on rows and then on each one of those rows put on these two columns so you get two dimensional so let's go over and implement this and then we'll put it into a report and see how we would use it in a front end so here in management studio we can see the exact same query and if I run this query, I will get just what I expected. So I have a list of dates and my count and distance. And if I want to change the date range, if I was in a report, I would probably be doing that. I could certainly go ahead and put in a longer date range. Maybe I'd like to get even bigger dates into this return set. Now I have a longer range. So we understand conceptually how to do this. Now the trick is, how do we make that into a parameterized report? So I have this report that I created previously, and it has a data set that contains a query almost identical to the one we were looking at. But what I've done is, on the rows, instead of having hard-coded values, I've put in parameters. I dropped the filter just to make this a little easier to read, but certainly the filter could still be there. And this parameter is begin date, then I have another parameter, end date. My parameters themselves are based on a query into the dimension. So for my available values, I will get values that look like this. The parameters are then inserted into the query, and I will get the range that I'm actually looking for. So if I click the preview button, and I see I have a begin date selector, an end date selector, and I can go ahead and choose a different date. 
and then see my longer range selection. So we're still giving our end users the ability to choose a date range and using sets to make that range work within the report.